What's up guys, today we're going to take a look at the Marvel Legends Thor Ragnarok slash Infinity Saga series Surtur action figure. Shout out to my buddy Vern who lent me this figure for the review. Let's take a quick look at the box. On the top, we have that Thor Ragnarok logo as well as Surtur's name. On the bottom, some product information. Moving down the side, there's the gradient artwork of the Avengers. On to the back, a description of Surtur's character, as well as the really vibrant Thor Ragnarok poster. And on to the last side, it's the same gradient artwork just reflected and then there are the Guardians of the Galaxy over here. So let's go ahead and get this figure open. And here he is out of the box with two spare hands and a gigantic sword. First up is to look at Surtur's sword. It's cast in a bright red plastic and given a dark glossy paint wash all over it. The dark glossy paint actually fades from the back of the blade to the front, where on the front is just a bare bright red plastic. Taking a closer look at the blade, it's got an interesting texture on it. It's got a wave-like pattern on it, on the back as well as the front of the blade, and that wavy texture makes it look like molten lava. There are also jagged edges over here, making the sword look ancient and battle-worn. It's got that same sort of consistency on the other side as well. And moving down to the hilt, this is where the texture changes and it looks a little more bony, with a sharp and curved shape on it. And this curved shape actually mirrors the look of Surtur's horns on his head. And down to the handle itself, it's mostly a pitted texture and it also has very deep scratches just in them. Once again looking very ancient and worn. And by default Surtur comes with two gripping hands so he can hold the sword in his right hand as well as holding it well in his left hand. And just to demonstrate how gigantic the sword is, here he is holding it just upright and it goes all the way up to his nose. Surtur's spare hands are cast in a translucent orange plastic and they seem to catch the light quite nicely. They're sculpted with a texture that makes it look like molten lava and the plastic also appears a little bit glossy. He's got long demonic looking nails. The outside of the hands are given that dark glossy wash and I'll talk a little bit more about this wash when we get to his main action figure body. The spare hands are articulated in as well as out. And you can easily swap those hands out for some display options and improved fun factor. Onto the sculpt of the figure itself. Most of his body from his head, torso and legs are cast in a yellow translucent plastic. His horns, arms and feet are cast in a translucent orange plastic. These colors and parts become more obvious when you take a look at it from the back. You see the yellow from the top of his head all the way to his ankles and the orange over here, his arms and his feet. And just generally overall, he's given that dark glossy paint wash that we saw on the sword. So the use of translucent plastics and the black wash is pretty cool because you can try out effects like this. Just shutting off my lights for a while and turning on my phone's flashlight and putting it just behind the figure. And this actually makes it look really awesome for photography. Thanks to my buddy Alex for pointing this out. Onto his head sculpt, his horns have the same worn out and scratched look that we saw on his sword as well as the jagged edges. And that gives him that centuries old demon look. Just looking overall at his face, besides that black wash, it's also got some orange wash on it as well. And just near his eyes, where his pupils are sharply painted in white, there's also yellow wash around his eyes, just to bring out that glow effect. And you can see that mix of yellow and orange wash within his mouth, while his tongue is given that black wash. He's sculpted with a raging screaming expression on his face. But depending on what you think about screaming head sculpts, taken out of context, he could actually look like he's mid-yawn or just laughing hysterically. So it might be wishful thinking on my part, but I think Hasbro should have given him an alternate head with a neutral expression. I want to point out that the black wash is actually quite precisely applied, but because of the pattern that Hasbro has used, it makes it look more organic. And I have to say that is quite a nice touch. However, I must also point out that he's mostly cast in the glossy plastic, and that may not be to everyone's taste. Moving to the back of his head, you can see more of the black wash on top of a very subtle orange wash below, while the back of his horns actually have no wash on them. Moving down to his torso is nicely sculpted with that same texture that we saw on his hands, just to make it look like it's a ball of fire, some lava, or actually some moving ash. The flames on top of his shoulders do actually look like there are separate pieces attached on. In a strange way, while his torso is cast in a yellow translucent plastic, it actually looks like it's fading from yellow on the right to orange on the left, and I think that is a pretty cool effect. And below all that texture, he's actually sculpted with pretty good proportions, and you can see that defined musculature below it. On the back of his torso, like I mentioned, the wash is pretty precise. And over here, the pattern actually looks like it's a ribcage of sorts. 
so I like how this wash is actually deliberate, even on the back of the figure. Onto his right arm again, the same textures and black wash as well as musculature. He's actually sculpted with a small ball of flames coming out of his right forearm. And the yellow wash over here works pretty well, and it's more obvious compared to the rest of the figure. The elbow joint actually looks a little weird because it doesn't have any of that wash over here. Moving on to the back of his right arm, and this is where it doesn't look so good, because now that yellow wash and black wash don't look like they work together, and there's no wash on the inside of his bicep, as well as the back of his lower part of his forearm. The conspicuous lack of wash on the inside of the arms is even worse on his left side. And when you move on to the side of his left arm, this time there's not so much blending of the black wash and yellow wash. In fact, the yellow wash is completely absent over here, but it has the yellow flame part attached onto his left bicep. And this flame part actually looks really jarring because it doesn't look like it blends in with the rest of the arm. Now onto his legs brings me to my next issue. While the entire figure, especially on the front, is given a wash, once you move him to the sides, you will notice the gap between his crotch piece as well as his thigh. And that entire gap just shows off a plain yellow plastic with no wash or paint applied inside. So this gap over here actually breaks the illusion of having an entire being made of fire and ash. Zooming into his feet, he's got very distinctly sculpted toes. The strange thing is that his toenails are actually pretty neatly trimmed. And that's a little odd when you compare it to his fingernails. Out of the box, his feet also have a kind of sticky or tacky feel to them. And that's a little strange. Next, I will also say that his feet look like obviously different colored plastics compared to the rest of his body. And that's not helped by the really dark black wash on his feet that does not fit very nicely into the rest of his lower leg. So he kind of looks like he's wearing black socks over here. Moving on to the back of his legs, the lack of black wash over here is really obvious. And once again, those black socks kind of stand out against the rest of his leg. So I'm actually not really pleased with how the legs turn out. On to articulation, his neck's on a dumbbell joint, so there's a ball joint at the top as well as the bottom of his neck. But that gives him very little tilt right and very negligible left. His head does go right and left. He can look up just that little bit, as well as down that much. For a large character, it's more important that he can look down at his enemies, but that range is also slightly hindered because of his screaming jaw. He's got a swivel hinge at the shoulder, so that goes 360, as well as going out that far. And that's mainly due to the sculpt over here at the top of his deltoid interfering with his shoulder. So you might have to articulate it somewhere else to get it to go further out. And this is as far as his arm will go out. This is slightly less than ideal, but that's even worse on his right arm. On his right deltoid, there's this huge bulge over here that does not allow his arm to go beyond this range. And despite rotating it all around and trying to find some spot where I could get his arm out, because the sculpt of the shoulder sits so close to the arm, there's no way of having that bulge slide into the torso to improve that range. So you might need to alter the sculpt over here in order to get his arm any further out. He's got an upper bicep swivel, so that goes 360. Double jointed elbow, so that's pretty good range. Swivel hinge at the left wrist, so that goes 360, as well as articulating down and up, which is appropriate for a sword wielding hand. And in the Ragnarok movie, Surtur appears to be using his sword with his left hand most of the time. On his right hand, he also has that same swivel, as well as articulating in, as well as out. He has a ball joint at the middle of his torso and a crunch at his waist. So that's kind of swapped from the regular Marvel Legends, looking more like the bodies from the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. The ball joint lets him tilt right a fair bit as well as left. Pretty good range. The ball joint also lets you rotate him 360 at the middle of the torso. And, couple, and coupling that ball joint as well as the waist crunch gets you a very good forward bend. And the backward bend is likewise pretty impressive as well. He's got an interesting detented ball joints at his hips and they go out that far. And as you can see, that actually came out one click. And it articulates backward just one click because of the sculpt of his butt. And it goes forward several clicks. He's got an upper thigh swivel that goes outwards as well as inwards. Again, it's also detented. Double joint at the knees, but these are not detented, they're just a smooth joint, pretty good range. He's got a swivel just above his ankle for 360, ankle tilt upwards as well as downwards quite a fair bit. And now he's also got detented ankle pivot outwards, as you can see it clicks, as well as inwards. 
And so his articulation works for the most part, the sore point being that his arms cannot go outward far enough, but you can still get him into pretty decent poses. And despite not having butterfly joints in his shoulders, you're still able to get him to hold his sword with both his hands. So that's pretty good in my book. And size-wise, Surtur stands at... 11 and 3 quarter inches up to the top of his head, and that's just under 30 centimeters. Or about 13 inches up to the top of his horns, and that's 33 centimeters. His sword stands at 10 and a half inches, or just under 17 centimeters. For some size comparisons, here he is with Hulk and Thor, Dormammu and Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier, some G.I. Joe classified series, and some Star Wars Black series. And just for a bit of fun, here he is with my really dusty sentinel. In closing, Surtur ends up being quite a mixed bag of good and bad. The paint wash is hit and miss, looking pretty good on the head and torso but gradually deteriorating down to the back of his legs and feet. I also wish he could have had an alternate head sculpt with a neutral expression. The outward articulation at the shoulder joint is also pretty bad. I just can't help but feel that we should expect much better on a line that is branded as premium. On the flip side, he's a great size to square up with Thor, and his sword is huge and powerful looking. I also think he'll actually look pretty decent on a Marvel Cinematic Shelf. Personally, I don't collect MCU figures, and I don't think this is a good stand-in for a comic accurate Surtur, so I'll be passing on it. If you're a big MCU Thor and Ragnarok movie fan, then this may be for you. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.